Hello everyone. Another wonderful day that the Lord has made. Let's rejoice and be glad in it. I'm Pastor Andrew Hill of the 11th Street Baptist Church and I wanted to welcome each and every one of y'all to our celebration of our school graduates and also our educational uh, certificates and awards. If you know, like I know, education is a very important thing. And these graduates have excelled and it's just been a wonderful uh, situation for us to be able to celebrate with the family and friends of the 11th Street Baptist Church and go ahead and celebrate their educational accomplishments. Let's go ahead and start this service off with a little prayer. You, you would just bow your heads. I'd appreciate it. Oh, Heavenly Father, thank you for another opportunity for us to come together. Lord, we thank you in advance for everything that you're about to do in this place today. Lord, we ask that you continue to cover us and bless us and watch over us, Lord. We know that these are tough times that we're going through, and there are situations that are happening to each and every one of us that seem to be overpowering us, Lord. But we thank you that you're all-powerful. We thank you that you're all-knowing. We thank you that you are mighty. We thank you that you are amazing, Lord. And we just stopped by here today to go ahead and lift it all up to you. We know that we come to celebrate accomplishments of every caliber. Lord, but we realize that those accomplishments would never be possible if it wasn't for you. And that's why we give thanks to you today, Lord. But Lord, in just thanking you for everything that you've done for us, we thank you for everything that you are to us. The Bible tells us that you're the Alpha and the Omega, which means you're the beginning and the end. And we realize that with that, you're everything all in between as well. So we lift it up to you, Lord. And we say we love you, Lord. We don't come here today seeking any glory for ourselves, Lord, because we realize that all of the glory and honor belongs to only you. So we lift it up to you today, Lord. Thank you for how you kept us. Thank you for how you loved us. Thank you for how you keep right on blessing us each and every day, Lord, even in this, despite of all of these situations and circumstances that we're going through. Lord, even if you never do another thing for us, we realize that you've already done enough in our lives. So we just say thank you from the bottom of our hearts, and most of all, we say we love you from the bottom of our hearts. Bless every church that's open in your name, Lord. And please continue to help bless them and encourage them to carry up this blood-stained banner and compel me to come unto you. Lord, we know that the time is growing short. But we know that you are a powerful God and you're covering us and protecting us and loving us like you do. Lord, please bless this program. Bless each and every graduate, each and every educational person personnel that may be uh, awarded something today. Lord, continue to help them to go on from this point and carry on with their lives and do exceedingly better things than they've ever done in their lives. Lord, but help them to do it not for their glory, only for your glory. All these blessings we ask today, we ask in the name of our darling son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Right, y'all. Well, we're going to go ahead and I'm going to let you know everything that's going to be on our program, and it will go as follows. Uh, the opening remarks, the welcome, which I'm doing now, <laughs> is, is uh, by me, yours truly, Pastor Andrew Hill. The introduction of graduates will be following the uh, this introduction 
and I will call them each one at a time, and they, they will come forward. And I also I'll also recognize all of the other educational people that we're going to recognize in this service. Following the introduction of graduates, when they come up forward and and line up up front, uh, we'll have a song by our blessed friend and wonderful lady, Miss Adria Moore, and uh, she'll be accompanied by. Minister, Bishop, <laughs> Cooper, <laughs> my good friend. We'll have a message to the graduates by Mr. Donald Nelson, great educator in the Arkansas School District. We'll have another song by Mr. Drea Moore, and then we'll pre present the awards and everything to uh, the different honorees. And then that will be followed by closing remarks and our benediction. So without further ado, we've already talked about the importance of our educational system and, and the different awards and everything. We're going to go ahead and introduce the graduates one, one at a time. Um, and I'm going to start off. Very first one will be Miss Brianna Nicole Carson. Thank Brianna. She's the daughter of Calvin Carson and late Rachella Melton Carson. Great granddaughter of late. Laura Melton and granddaughter of Stephanie Melton, sister of Zach Melton and Shaq Melton. She will be attending Texarkana College for welding and UMA, which is Ultimate Medical Academy for Nursing Online. She graduated from Liberty Alamo High School and she currently works at Domino. Her favorite hobbies are shopping and coloring and talking on the phone. <laughs> My motto is, too much money to be lazy. My favorite scripture is 1 Timothy 4 and 12, which reads as follows. Don't let anyone look down on you because you are young. But set an example for the believers in speech, in life, in love, in faith, and in purity. Amen. Miss Brianna Nicole Carson. All right. Our next graduate from right here in the house is Sister Sandy James, Mrs. Sandy James. She's married to one of our esteemed deacons, Brother Leroy James Sr. They have two young men and one daughter-in-law, Telvin Leroy Jr. and Caleb. Sandy is the daughter of Shirley McDaniel and the granddaughter of the late Warren and late Margaret McDaniel. Sandy is the oldest of five Michael, Cassandra, Marcus, Keith. Sandy set a goal, and with the grace of God, it has been met. Sandy will be graduating on this Tuesday, July the 21st, with a Child Development Associate Applied Science with a 3.75 GPA. Miss Sandy James, y'all. All right. We wanted to also recognize the graduates of some of our members here. And I will read uh, their names and their information as I have it here on this. 
Sister Carolyn Walker has two nieces and one nephew. I need my glasses for this. They are Christian Neal, who graduated from Bryan High School in Bryan, Arkansas. Denasia Gordon graduated from Waukegan High School in Little Rock, Arkansas. And Jalen Davis graduated from Episcopal Collegiate School in Little Rock, Arkansas. All right, y'all give them a hand. Y'all give them a hand. And our wonderful members, Taft and George Wilson, they have a granddaughter, Amari Burks, who graduated from Lake Highland High in Dallas, Texas. Y'all go ahead and give them a hand. And then yours truly, uh, me and my wife, we have a niece. Uh, I don't have all of her, her particulars, but I can ask my wife all of her particulars. But I know she graduated from Jackson Olden High School in Birmingham, Alabama. And uh, she is going to be attending uh, Auburn University. Uh, and she's a track officiant as well. Uh, so I want to give her a, a, a very special hand, too. Uh, her name is London Brandon. I'm sorry, I didn't call out the name. <laughs> London Bradley, but she's graduating. Uh, uh, she graduated from Jackson Olden in Birmingham, Alabama. And we had a, a late addition of uh, uh, another member, uh, Brother Leroy James Jr. He received his master's in education administration from Regis College in Denver, Colorado. Yes, yes. Now that that's just a wonderful outpouring of, yes. of of people right here in the house, or, or family members of of some of our members here in the house. So we want to just give them another big hand, give them a real big hand, and we can do better than that. That's just a wonderful accomplishment. All right. Thank you, Tab. <laughs> okay. Next we'll have uh, Miss Adriel Moore. Yeah. 
will certainly remember the name Adrian Hannah. <laughs> oh man, that was good. Now we will have the the presentation, the uh, message to the graduates and to all of our educational personnel. Uh, I didn't even read off the uh, rest of the educational personnel that we want to celebrate too, so I'll do that before uh, calling this esteemed uh, administrator forward. Um, we wanted to recognize Ms. Cassandra Murphy, who is the Campus Teacher of the Year at Union Elementary. All right, yes, yes. That's a, a wonderful thing, one of our own. Got Teacher of the Year. Uh, we also want to recognize Miss Leah McDonald for her 15 year service award from TASD. As an employee of TASD my, myself, I know how, how it takes a lot of prayer and a lot of encouragement to make it 15 years over there, you know. <laughs> I'm just. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> and this one, woo, it takes a lot of prayer. Brother Leroy James, we want to recognize him for 30 years of service to TASD. All right, all right, all right, thank you. But without further ado, I want to call uh, forward uh, one of our wonderful trustees here at uh, 11th Street Baptist Church. And this uh, wonderful man is not only uh, a former administrator, uh, assistant superintendent at uh, TASD, Texas County Arkansas School District, but he's also uh, done one very important thing. He was my principal. So he's, a, he, he's very important. <laughs> He's a, a very important person. But without further ado, I'd like to call forward Mr. Mr. Uh, Nelson, Mr. Donald Nelson. He's trying to make a preach out of me now. I've been accused, uh, and now he's trying to call me. Ms. Wilson came up and she said, uh, we didn't have a formal introduction for you, and so uh, you introduced yourself, and what the pastor has said about me is enough. Uh, he just said that I was a good guy, whatever the case may be, and Sometimes it's hard to find good guys now. <laughs> okay. uh, I guess my name is Donald X. Since Nelson is my slave name, uh, my name, I really now realize that my real name is Donald X uh, because I'm not real sure uh, what my name was before my slave name. But to the pastor, uh, who is calling me to preach. I had planned to be right here. He said, no, you come up here. Uh, to Sister Wilson, who makes things light up when days are dark. Uh, to Mrs. Hill, who is also a part of the, the lightning rod for, for this church. In fact, this afternoon, I called Zella and Madison. Hadn't talked to them in a long time. Just wanted to see how they were doing it, and they wanted to know, well, how is the church doing? And I told them the church was doing fine under Brother Andrew Hill and, and the Madison. Uh, this is not an easy speech, because of the fact I got to speak in three generations. Uh, I got to speak in my generation, and most of my generation is gone. And then I got to speak in Sandy's generation, or her generation, and Brianna's generation are different. And I got to try to make sense in three different 
generations. And so for me, this is a pretty tough speech, but I'm going to do the best I can, okay? When Ms. Wilson called me, uh, I was shocked because generally the uh, common uh, knowledge is that old people can't speak to young ones. I would agree with that. It depends upon who the old person is. Uh, and so in the meantime, I said, well, I'll come. And she said, I want you to do two things. I want you to make it short, and I want it to be complimentary. I said, now, George, you know I've grown up on my feet for, for speaking. And she said, well, let me ask you a question, Mr. Nelson. Do you believe in a peaceful, free and peaceful assembly? And I said, yes, I do. What about, do you believe in the freedom to speak? I said, I do. She said, well, do you believe in the freedom of a speech? And I said, I do. She said, well, that's good. I want you to come and give a free speech. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so let me say to you all this afternoon, I'm going to speak as if, as if there were 200 people in here. It doesn't matter to me. I, I prepared, uh, and I just want to say to you, to the honorees, I'm going to congratulate you. Uh, I'm going to use an analogy for you to understand where I've been in terms of where you are. There was a young man walking one afternoon, and he just decided to walk through the cemetery. And as he walked through the graves, looking at the headstones, he saw one that really impressed him. So he turned and walked up on the grave and he stood there for a few minutes. And on the headstone it said, I don't know who you are standing on me. But at one time I stood just where you are standing. And if you live on and keep your head in God's hand and have a wholesome life, you will live a long time and you will lie where I, where I am laying. And so I'm saying to you that I've been where both of you are sitting. Somewhere back in 1954, before either of you were born, I graduated from Washington High School, which was the alternative school, on May, the, uh, the year that the Supreme Court passed the decision of Brown versus the Board of Kansas, which meant that from here on in, we're going to have the segregation in busing, in restaurants, entertainment, and whatever the case may be. It just so happened that year I was 17, so you know I'm closer to 117 now than I am 17. Okay. Uh, I can remember uh, Brianna graduating. We went to the commencement. You all did not get a chance to go. And I know your class will say, well, I, I had to go over there. We sure got swapped around. But I want you to know you're not the first to get swapped around because people have been getting swapped around all before you. The kids at Little Rock Central, they shut Little Rock Central School down for two years. They didn't get a chance to graduate, and the next year didn't have anywhere to go. And so God does that. He comes, and for your class, he just sort of said, I'm going to shut it down. But you are not the first, and you won't be the last, because he will appear again and shut some other things. That's just the way he operates. He don't text us and tell us. He don't email and He just does what he wants. God doesn't need any suggestion from us. He can do what he want to do when he get ready. So in the meantime, I just want you to know that I commend you and I graduate you. I mean, I, I congratulate you because you finished. Did you know that the research says that for every 100 students that started out with you in the first grade, that by the time you reach the 12th grade, only 30 of those 100 students graduate? Well, that's, that's tragic, because that means 70 kids dropped out that were in your class when you started in the first grade. Between the first grade and, and graduation, 70 of those kids dropped out. So you all are something special, because you, you stayed in. And again, I certainly want to congratulate you, because it's not about getting started. It's about staying to the finish. This is what Solomon said in the Ecclesiastics 9-11. He said, the race is not given to the swift, 
not a battle always to the strong, not a bread to the wise, not the riches to the intelligent, not the favor of those with knowledge, but time and chance happen to all men. And what he's just simply saying that there was somebody that started off with you all, you took off a little fast, but they didn't finish. Okay, they were strong, but the race is not always given to the strong. They were swift, the race is not always. It, it's given to the one that endured to the end. And you all, regardless of you took the time and you took the chance to endure to the end. I know both of you feel very good about yourself. And Brianna, uh, as I indicated, my senior year, I think I was most maybe up in bright red. And we had a commencement. And we all thought it was the end. We were graduating, now this is the end. Little did we know that the, commence, the word commencement means to begin. And what I'm simply saying to you specifically, that you're not at the end, you're just at the end of one segment of your life, and you are at the beginning, and I heard them say you were going to the college of the next segment. I also want to say to you that I've been called upon to speak to all of the classes at Booker Washington from, uh, in their, their 10th year, from 1961 to 1969. Some of them I spoke there, 10th year, that 20th year, that 30th year, and, and the law. And I found out and I said to them, the first 10 years after you graduate from high school are critical because anybody who's not going to do well will get into some things during that first 10 years that will mean it will set the tone for the rest of their life. If you're going to be very successful, we'll see it in the first 10 years. That first 10 years at the high school is very critical. Because what you're going to be doing the rest of your life really gets a start in the first 10 years. And so again, I congratulate you. I borrowed some, some advice from Joe Austin, who's one of my favorites, and from Denzel Washington. You all know him? Okay. I'm gonna, I, I, you know, I, I, I'm not going to take for credit, credit for what they said, I want to give them credit. And here's what Joel Austin said. He said, the richest places on earth are not in the oil field, the gold mine, and the bank. But the richest place on earth is in the cemeteries, where that lies an abundance amount of untrapped skills and weight. He said, buried in the cemetery are dreams that were never followed, inventions that were never developed, poems and music that were never written, skills that were never used talents that were never utilized, careers that were never completed. So for you, don't take your treasures to the grave. You use them while you're still living, where you can make life better for you and for others around you. He says, always seek to upgrade your life. Don't allow yourself to be at the same place next year. Always seek to improve. If you're not improving next year, he said, you are losing. You certainly don't want to be losers. Don't assume that someone has a position that you want and that you'll never get it. He said, what you just do is just keep improving because that may be a position that God does not want you to have. But by not giving you that position, he's going to fix, fix up one better for you. So don't you start improving. You just keep improving. He said, God provides 86,400 seconds each day. And we ought to use those seconds improving ourselves. Develop a growth plan. It's imperative, imperative that you continue to grow. For some of us, it need, we need to grow up. Don't fail to continue to sharpen your skills. You got skills just because you graduated from high school and you got your bachelor's. Don't fail to continue to sharpen those skills. He said David practiced to sharpen his skills with a slingshot every day. And when God chose to use him, he was ready. And God chooses to use us, to use us. And that's why you don't hear me doing uh, a long moderation and introduction by myself because he let me live long enough to realize that what I have done was something that he wanted me to do. He gave me an assignment. What I've done, he just simply said, Moses, I want you to go to Egypt. I've been over there for 400 years in bondage, and I want you to go to Egypt 
and I want you to bring my people back. At the same time, he had in mind that there was a little colored boy with thick lips and 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 uh, and uh, not a hair that was in Texas County, and he said, "I'm going to use him to go to Arkansas High and to the central office, and I want him to do what I need him to do. Doesn't matter about how ugly he is, how he smells, because God doesn't always choose the best looking people to do His work. He chooses who He wants." And then when he chooses what he wants, he tells them what to do and what to say. And so that's what he did for me. And that's why I don't go through a lot of uh, introduction anymore. I don't allow anybody to talk about the Greek thing. Like, all that's not important because all of that really came from him. Brianna, be selective about the people you hang around. Surround yourself with people that really matter. People that know a great deal. Sometimes they may be smarter than you, but that's all right. Because you're not going to let smartness intimidate you. You're going to use that smartness to, to motivate yourself and, to, uh, and, and as an inspiration. Be selective about the TV programs that you watch. Watch some news, some classical, some historical, and educational programs. My sister-in-law, my wife's youngest sister, has four, five, four kids. My wife and I went to Little Rock, to Little Rock. My wife and I went to Little Rock. Uh, and on that given day, her oldest daughter was back because their principal, when they were in high school, went to Little Rock Central, uh, had passed away and she came home for the funeral. And while we were sitting on the porch, one of her friends was with us. And her friend said, Sandy, her name was Sandy, your mama still don't let y'all watch TV like she didn't let y'all watch TV when you was in high school? Sandy said, well, we could watch it on the weekend. She said, that, may be, that must be mighty tough. And so I said to my sister-in-law, Nancy, I said, you mean to tell me to let the kids watch TV during the week? She said, no, we didn't have time for TV. Now, let me tell you where the kids are. Keith is, went to the University of Iowa. is now in stocks and bonds, just come back from China. Sandy is a doctor in Clark County Hospital in Chicago. Uh, Kelly is a banker in North Carolina, and Kyle Allen is a lawyer in one of the biggest law firms in Little Rock. Okay, that's the, that, that's what happened. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that young people shouldn't look at TV during the week. I'm just saying you need to be careful what you look at. It can't be all comedy and all hip hop and gangsters and horror. It's got to be some news and some classical kinds of things so that you will have a wide range of appreciation when you see them. And then again, Brianna, you got to have a stay plan. And you said, well, what is a stay plan? We ain't talking crazy, no. I'm saying you got to stay out of jail, stay out of the grave, and stay out of prison. And the reason I'm directing this to Brianna or Sandy, you, you already know that. And the fact that you, uh, where you are, you've already done that. When you're young like her, everything is kind of exciting. And sometimes you get into some things that, when you know it, it's exciting, but you find out good to you, but not good for you. Okay. You gotta stay away from drugs, alcohol, and pills. And then you gotta stay in school, stay in church, Stay in touch and a good relationship with your family and stay with a good relationship with God. So that's the state plan you gotta have. Probably be the best on any job or committee or organization you're on. If you are absent from the job, sometimes they don't miss you. And when they don't miss you, they just finally decide, well, we don't need you. I worked during the summer for the city. Um, that time we had the young guys who were playing in the creeks, and I was kind of the director for that program. And we laughed it because that was a maintenance guy who actually had not been off on vacation for 16 years. Two weeks vacation, they said he'd build all of that. And the reason he hadn't been on vacation, he was afraid that they were gonna see how well they could do without him. So he was scared to go on vacation. If you continue to make yourself productive, God will see that you prosper. He will, further, he will further you far beyond your dreams. And don't forget, 
when he made the prophets. Give him all the praise, all the glory, all the honor, and all the credit. I'm going to borrow a few words from Denzel Washington, and I'm going to be true. Okay? Denzel said, put God first in everything you do. Everything you have is by the grace of God. He says, hard work and perspiration equals work. And there's nothing easy about work. He said, but people who are successful, that's what they do, they work. I used to say to students uh, who come to me and they say, oh, Mr. Nelson, I, you know, I want to do this. I said, let me tell you something. The research says that learning is not easy. It's work to learn. That's why a lot of uh, young people and students go away and go the other way. There are only 2% of the people in the world who learn easy. And I've seen some of them. They say, oh, I didn't worry about studying. You know, I just spent a little bit of it. I was not one of those. I was one of those that had to work. Learning is not easy. It takes a lot of hard work and perspiration to learn, but it pays off in the end. He says, don't confuse moving with progress. Sometimes you're moving, and you're moving backwards. Or you could be running in the same space. So just because you're moving, don't consider that to be progress. And there are a lot of people who will tell you, oh, you'll be fine. You need to get on the track. Well, that's not enough. I'm telling you. I know that's not enough. You need to get on the track, but you need to get on the track going in the right direction. If you get on the track going in the wrong direction, something is going to happen. No matter how rich you get, you never see the U-Haul behind a hearse. So what it simply says to you, you can't take it with you, take some of it and share it with someone else. Sometimes people outside of your family, share it, be sure that if you are rich, that you can take what you got and make the world a better place for something else. And I like this one. He said the Egyptian pharaohs, and I, I taught world history, and I can remember talking about King Khufu, who built the, built, built the Great Pyramid uh, back in that particular time. Uh, I think it stood some 500 feet in the air. Some of the stones were weighed 5,000 pounds. And we are still trying to find out now how, got, how they got those stones up there. And they didn't have the pulleys and all the equipment that we had. But the Egyptian pharaohs, they built those pharaohs, and they put wealth and all kinds of goods, both because they expected to live, use them again in the next life. Well, unfortunately for them, some people broke in the pyramid. And all that they had stole up now is gone. So don't try to store up all of your treasures, but take some of what you have, make life a better place for you and a better place for others. You know what Robert Smith did at Morehouse? He spoke. He was a commencement speaker down there last year. And before he was through, he said, you know what I'm going to do? I've been very, very successful. He is a billionaire. He was a graduation speaker. It will not allow me to speak because I don't have the $10. He paid for all of the students' loans. All the student loans that they had at Morehouse that they would have taken 10 or 12 years later to pay off, he paid them. He didn't take it and put it in the pyramid and wait to use it later on. And that's what it says. You all could, you know, could just be rich. Sandy's already rich because she's got a wonderful family. Two boys are doing well. She just got through announcing that one's got the masters, the other one's working out here at the college. I, I remember when I was, we couldn't even go to the college. And he is, he is working at the college. Won't be long, he'll have his masters. She got a great husband, outstanding. I really, by virtue of the fact they sent those kids away from Arkansas out of Texas, I wanted to jump on with Mr. James. But he was too big and too mean. <laughs> So in the meantime, I left him alone, and both of the boys graduated from Texas High. And I looked in that magazine, and I saw them, and I said, well, we should have had Arkansas High. As I close, let me say to you, get ready, because you're going to get knocked down. And just because of the fact you get knocked down, don't mean that you stay down. Get up. The only people who own me are those who get knocked down and those who stay down. When you go to bed at night, put your sleepers, flippers, 
under the bed. So that when you get up the next morning, you have to get on your knees to get your slippers. And while you're down now, you can thank the Lord for all the great and wonderful things. Listen, I've had a great time talking to you all. It's been wonderful. There are three things you need to do in order to be successful. That pray, pray, and pray. Thank you.
Girl, you're anointed. You are truly anointed. And Bishop I already know you're anointed. So <laughs> but I want to thank both of them for coming by and blessing us with the, with the music and the song and the, the worship. And thank each and every one of you guys. So without further ado, I'll go ahead and uh, uh, prepare to close. Can we stand to our feet? And... Let's bow our heads. Oh, Heavenly Father, thank you once again for allowing us to be here at this program. Lord, we consider ourselves privileged to even be in your presence. We thank you for this opportunity. Lord, I ask that you bless each and every graduate that we mentioned, each and every uh, member uh, that, that's in education that uh, received an award or a, a received an acknowledgement today. Please bless them and encourage them that this is not the end of their journey. This is only the beginning. Please help them to reach for higher heights. Help them to go where no man has ever gone before in their lives. Lord, help them to do challenging things. Help them to do anything that you desire for them to, do, to, to be and to do. Lord, we're asking that you just bless each and every one of us and look down deep inside of us. And if you see things that are missing inside of us, please go ahead and place those things in each and every one of us. If you look inside of us and there's no peace there, give us that peace that passes all understanding. If you look at our hearts and our minds and you don't see any love there, please give us that love so that we can love our fellow man and also love our enemies. Lord, if you look inside of us and you don't see any joy there, Lord, above all, please give us that joy, that joy that will let us know that even though we're going through tough times, you're still in control. Lord, we know that once you're in control and once we accept that control that you have in our lives, you can do exceedingly abundantly above anything that we can ever require of you, Lord. So we're asking that you have your way in our lives. Help encourage us to be everything that you desire for us to be. And Lord, when all is said and done for each and every one of us, please prepare us a place so we can be with you and we can be encouraged and love on you, ensuring that blessed rest that you have for us. And now may the grace of God and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide with each and every one of us until we meet again. Let us all say, Amen. Thank mm -hmm. you.